I never know actually when this thing starts recording or when people join. There's a five, five to 10 second delay. So it's just very awkward. What am I supposed to do, stare at the camera? Hi everyone, my queens. Thank you so much for joining. I'm excited to see you. Thursday night, weekend's almost here. Hi, hi everyone. We'll just wait a couple of minutes for um, whoever wants to join the live to join. We have a lot of information tonight, especially since I'm going to be away next week. So I just wanna make sure I address everyone's questions today and I won't see you until next Monday. So Monday, I don't know what date that is, but it's not this coming Monday, it's the following Monday. I got my skeleton from my vision board. I think I asked you in the email, why was that skeleton on your vision board? And I don't think you ever replied to that. You said the dresses were there for a reason, but the skeleton, if you guys don't know, if you're doing my 60 day challenge, I do want to see your vision. Like the second tab is called life and images. And I do want to see that because I want to make sure by looking at that, I understand what you desire, right? So I have to be able, as a stranger, not knowing your life, I have to be able to look at your life and images and understand what your desires are, what your priorities are. So this queen had the skeleton there and I said, what's up with the skeleton? What's going on? And um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited you got it. I remember, normalize this. We get everything we put in, in our 60-day um, challenge. It has to do, the timing is not up to us, but we're sort of, now that we have the Facebook group and everyone is, is um, posting about their manifestation, we kind of have a time frame about how long approximately it takes everyone to get it. It's a 12-foot skeleton for my front yard sold out last year very hard to get okay it made your vision board that's amazing i love that you got it of course you got it of course you got it so here's how you have to think about it queen if you got the skeleton from your vision board everything else is just it's just the same thing Right? It's just the same thing as getting any other photo. You can't get one photo from your vision board, but not the rest. That, that wouldn't make sense. The timing is sort of what we're working on, and that has to do with your limiting beliefs around all of those images, but, or each of those images, rather. But the guarantee of you getting them is 100%. So I don't know how many of you on this live remember the $500 challenge, which I think we did six weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of people got it, the 500, like an exact amount of $500. I just got mine today, very unexpectedly. And at that time, a, a friend of mine actually invited me to a seminar that cost $4.99. So she paid for it, she paid for the ticket. And I took that as a sign of my manifestation. But when I started to see you queens getting an exact amount of $500, I was like, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to reverse that and not accept my friend's seminar of $4.99 as my manifestation result. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to go back and ask for $500, right? Like the exact amount. And today I got it. I posted about it on the Facebook group. Um, this is how it happens. But I sort of between then and now, I sort of forgot about it, right? So it's only when you let go, it happens. This has always been the case with me. It's never when you when you sort of obsessed of, over that idea over and over. That's not when it happens. Josiah, I don't um, understand any other languages, so I don't know. If you want to put a comment in English, I may address it. Um, please keep all the comments in, uh, in English. All right, so we had many Greenstone manifestations, actually a lot more than I expected. Right, because it's so nondescript, like a horse, we know what it is, $500, we know what it is. But I was surprised to see how many of you queens have uploaded photos of green stones. And one was something that was on the road. One was, I was in this jewelry store and my friend took me shopping and I just passed by and it was like a beautiful ring, a beautiful pendant. Another one was, 
my daughter ordered something off of Amazon and it came. She asked me to open it as she's not home. And when I opened it, it was like a whole bunch of green stones. So, you know, I'm, I'm just really, really happy. Like we're getting more and more stories for each of the weekly manifestation. Now we're going to stay in the area of horses and the green stone for the week that I'm away because I want to allow time to catch up to some of you who haven't manifested either. And I just want to make sure everybody gets it because this success story, success in manifestation is cumulative only because your brain gets used to the idea that you can, right? So you need three in a row, four in a row of this weekly manifestation. And then you'll be like, wow, you know, if I can do this, I can do anything. If I can bring this in my experience, why can't I bring something else? And there's no reason why you can't, right? It's all our limiting beliefs, but it's important that you see results on, on the things that you have no energetic investment in, right? Um, the Facebook group is where you put the manifestation. The link is in my bio. Again, if you want to join, um, I, I put like a very, very symbolic price around it. Value for value. Please be aware. This is my only manifestation account and I will never contact you. I have to say this on every live because I realize that people are opening, they're saving my videos and they're opening other accounts and putting my videos and just using my username in a slight variation. So do not be tricked by scammers. I will never contact you. I will never ask you for anything. So it's important to know if you get a contact from you know my picture or it's a scammer. I guess that's the price that comes with having followers. I'm not sure. It's too bad people are doing that, but I don't wanna focus on that. I'll just mention it though on every live so you guys are aware. That's probably the case for every creator, I think. I don't know. All right, I want to talk about a very important dream that I had last night that I think is very pertinent, the interpretation of it to the group. And it's around the key manifestation. It's around the key manifestation that we had two weeks ago, right? Two weeks ago, we manifested um, a key. We're manifesting. And many people got the key. Some people got more than one key. Some people got a whole bunch of key, like on a keychain at the same time. Some people got more than one key in the same week, etc. So it's different for everybody, but the way your manifestation shows, it's important. It has meaning. So I want to tell you about my dream. And I'm going to give you a little bit of background because um, it's pertinent to the interpretation. So in my dream, I'm in my house that I'm currently at now. And I have this dream that in my house, there's this old boyfriend that I had in university. Okay. It's not anyone that many, many years ago. It's not anyone I think about. It's not anyone I had any negative feelings when I left that relationship. It was just like a blah thing, right? So completely neutral, no feelings, anything, but he's in my house. And in my dream, I'm like, what the hell are you doing here? Get out. Right. So I'm opening the door and I'm like pushing him out. I'm like, get out of my house. Like, what are you, what are you doing here? And I don't know. He was mumbling something in the dream. I've never dreamt of him before. And then I, I go to grab his keys, which were on my counter to just give it to him so he can leave. And on his keys, I don't know, in my dream, I know that one of the keys that he has on his keychain is my house key. So my house key is like, it's just my house key on his keychain, right? So I'm like, you have a key to my house? Like, what the heck? You've had a key to my house all this time? And again, this is many, many years ago. I don't know what this person is up to. I don't care at all. So it's just very random. So I'm opening the keychain and taking my key out from the keychain. And I'm like, get out of my house. Like, I pushed him out of my house. I'm keeping my key. Take your keys. And I, I sort of like threw him out, right? So here's the extremely meaningful interpretation of this dream. With anyone you sort of share a past with, whether it's, you know, people that you had a romantic connection, people you, who are your friends, who are no longer in your life, those people have an energetic thread back into your life. And as you're doing this work, if you're doing this work along with a group, you know that I told you guys, it is very important to gather back your power from 
whatever it has been scattered over the last 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, whatever age you are. Okay, so this is very important work. In order to have focused and direct consciousness, you cannot, you have to gather back the pieces of you that have been left behind everywhere. Okay, so in this dream, I'm taking back the key to my house from like this random person that means nothing. But in my mind, I'm associating this person with everyone I may have left a piece of myself with. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So it's very important in your meditation, in, in your, so for the people who found more than one key in, in our key manifestation, I really think that has to do with getting back your power. And the more you sort of contemplate on this, where was it scattered? Why you sort of, you taking back the keys from your energetic system. You're not, which should be closed, by the way. You should only open your energetic system to the people you want to open it to, to the people you want to be connected to. You should have complete control. But of course, that's not how we are trained and that's not how people live these days. People these days, they walk around open, no armor, no shield, going out there into the world. You know, anyone, anyone, bombard me with jealousy, with your negative thoughts, with just, I'm, I'm here. You know, I'm here. And, and if you shine, okay, if you're doing this work and you shine a little bit brighter, they notice you more. Key, key information. You need to always have your protection on, right? Always the veil of protection, especially you're going on cra in crowds, you're going in grocery store, you're going to parties. Just make sure they see you. Like their negative thoughts see you. Like you, you're no longer able to blend, right? Because the blending of consciousness is all negative right now. So if you're not blending, you're standing out. If you're standing out, you're going to be targeted. So please don't be afraid of this because there's an easy solution. You just always have to be aware. Be like, nothing can touch me. I have conscious control. I'm gathering back all the power from where I scattered it across this room or across my past and nothing can touch me. This is my free will. My free will reigns supreme. Okay, so I wanted to, to talk to you guys about this dream and I want you to pay attention, contemplate those of you who found the key, contemplate sort of with what, what people this key is associated in your mind, go to that person, take the same key back from them and just say, I'm taking back whatever I gave you energetically because I no longer want to be connected to you in any way. And that could be a person that you hate, you still have to do this mental exercise it's not good to hate anyone. I got a message also about negative people. What can I do about the negative people around me? Okay, let me just decline this. Guys, please don't call me during my lives. I don't take calls. Um, so this queen is telling me all these negative people around me. It's not so much that I have negative thoughts, but um, they're all negative. Well, negativity is contagious. And if a thought is repeated enough around you, it, you, you'll have no choice but to absorb it, right? Remember, we talked about how we have two modes. One is when we project, when we create, when we give our energy forth, coming out of us, like the way I'm doing now. And the other one is when you absorb, when you're having a conversation with a friend, when you're absorbing, when you're watching TV, when, when you're, even when you're meditating, right? Because you're absorbing, but you're, it's focused absorption. So it's a bit different. Um, so if in your absorption mode, you have all this negative people around you, guys, you're going to need to make some changes in your life. A lot of people are breaking up their relationships in the process of doing this work. And I'm going to tell you, if you guys know me, you know, my work is inspired by the seminar. I went to Dr. Joe Dispenza at this seminar. They open up with this joke that, uh, ha ha, don't be surprised. Um, if so, basically put a answering message on your machine that I'm gone for seven days and I'm not going to be checking my messages. And if I don't call you back, then you're one of the changes that I have made in my life. Ha ha ha. Right. And they're telling you very clearly. A lot of people go back. They can't stand the same jobs. They can't stand the same husbands. They can't stand the same relationships with their friends. There's a reason for this, because as your energy shifts dramatically, you're not going to be able to stand the same life circumstances. So the idea is they will there will be social changes in your life. 
right? There will be social changes in your life. Just don't be afraid of this. Don't be afraid. I have two queens who broke up with their um, significant other or specific people or maybe just boyfriends this weekend. And they still like, I got an update from one of them. She still feels great just doing it, just being like, my God, this is like such a relief. You know, I can't believe I was there for like how many years. And I'm just really excited to see this mindset shift, uh, this mindset shift in terms of it's not, oh my God, I'm going to lose this. And can I find something mediocre like this again? Can I? You shouldn't want something mediocre like that again. Right? Because if you're elevating yourself to be a queen, to be loved, wanted, protected, adored, provided for, always thought about, always prioritized, then how can you cling to something mediocre? You need to let go of that and that person will either come back and meet your standards after a certain time or you'll meet somebody else who'll meet your standards. Right? No kidding. Yesterday I broke up with a 10 year friendship. I became aware of his falseness. A lot of people um, are doing that in my group. I'm not sure who that is because you guys like your usernames. I can't tell who that is. I have somebody who told me I broke up a 30 year friendship. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, it's like I wasted like so much time over the course of 30 years on this person that brought no value to my life. When you're doing this work, you'll realize you are of value. So value demands value. That's why I don't offer anything for free. Okay. I'll offer it for like a few dollars, but you don't offer anything for free. I don't offer my energy for free. I don't offer, you don't offer it. Get it? Value for value. Now what value you determine? Sometimes you, you make it less like the way I do like my stuff just because I want everybody to have access to it, but there should be a value associated. So determining your relationship, the value should be high. The value you demand to match you. Could you please repeat how we get our power back energetically? What once we made vows spiritually, you mean you got married in a church? Is that what you mean? I just want to make sure I understand the background of this question. Just tell me. Nay. What you mean by that? You made vows spiritually. I want to make sure I understand the question. You made vows like in a marriage? I, I just want to understand, or is this something, a certain affirmation that you're making or, or something like this? I'll come back to your question of vows in a marriage. Okay. So the person, I think I might make a video on this. Okay. But there's a few steps to this. I, I need to make a video on this. The idea is twofold. One is that you are no longer the person who has made those vows, right? As you were born anew into the work, like that was a different person that committed to that man. And then, but I, I will explain it in more details. And number two, you have to consciously, you know, like my dream with the key, if you haven't, if you just joined the live, go back and watch the beginning. You have to consciously go back to that moment and call back your power to the highest benefit of all. Like you, it's an actual exercise that we do to break the energetic uh, connection. We, it's also called in the spiritual community, cutting the cord cutting the energetic cord, you are right. There is an energetic cord that is formed by the ritual of marriage, especially ritual of marriage in a church. I will do a video, if not tomorrow, then the day after, but I think it's a very relevant question. All right, so the negative people in your life, you'll need to cut some of them, right? So what else I wanna talk about? Okay. So I want to talk about people who ask me, how long does it take to um, manifest my SP, to manifest uh, some money, to manifest the amount of time that it takes has to do with you. The how doesn't have to do with you, but the amount of time has to do with you, with the inner you, right? So development of the spiritual powers, which I believe I 
somebody left a comment that I'm doing witchcraft and I should stop doing it. So I addressed that in, in all seriousness without addressing the comment here. I made a video, is it witchcraft, right? In which I'm talking about what it is, right? It's, it's not that manifestation is witchcraft, which is negative. It's that witchcraft is manifestation of evil, right? The formless substance is neutral. You can imprint anything in it. It doesn't care if you're imprinting evil or not. But luckily, the way we are designed, people of lower vibrational consciousness cannot connect as easily as the rest of us, let's say of us, right? So if you work to improve your vibration and gain frequency, the faster you gain frequency, the faster you will manifest. Now, people are asking, how can people, you know, connect and do like really evil things still? So there's two ways. I don't really want to go into this because I don't want to. My work is all about focus on the individuals manifesting the life of their dreams. But sometimes one of these questions come up, so I'll loosely address it. The two ways to connect that they use to do evil things. One is via ritual. For that, you need more than one person. You need a group of people. And that group of people, the power being amplified is different than one person vibrating at a higher frequency. And of course, they know some codes that they, we, we know, we've seen movies and I'm not really going to go into it. Okay. And the other way that people with evil intent can connect is you can purposely train your mind into higher frequencies and you can purposely try to get closer to what I call our creator. Okay. And not, nothing's going to stop you from that. Nothing can stop anyone from that. And when you get close, you can simply change your mind and use it for evil. This is what is called free will. Your free will is never in question. This is like, goosebumps type, you know, conversation, it's awful, right? But you can actually, you'll be allowed if you raise your vibration to fly closer, closer up. And once you get there, you can, you know, we don't do that here, but you can change your mind and use that to spread evil down from there. Okay, let's move on from this. I was talking about developing spiritual powers. Because it's been edited out of our education, out of our children, like we should be taught this at age five, six, maximum, before the age of seven, right? Because they say before, for the first seven years, you're in your mother's vibration. And after that, so before you detach from your mother's energetic vibration, you should be taught what to do with your own vibration, but we're not, right? So that's like having a healthy child putting them, strapping them in a wheelchair when they're born and telling them you can never walk, right? So that child is going to function in the wheelchair. And then at 20 years old, you tell this child, actually, you may be able to walk. You know, why don't you try it? So what needs to happen is two things. Number one, he needs to believe that he can walk. So you need to believe that you can actually do these things. You need to have faith that you have been given these powers, that you just haven't used them. So number one, he has to believe he can walk. And number two, it's going to take him a length of time, which, you know, a doctor could tell you because it's the physical body, but let's say it's three months, six months of training those muscles in his legs so he can walk. Get it? So what you're doing right now is you're training your muscles to walk, to do this. How long is it going to take you, right? So the question is, for how long have you believed the opposite? And do you think, do you think within a day or two or a week, all your powers will return? First of all, do you even believe you have powers or are you just trying this for fun? Do you believe you have more power that you've been, than you've been led to believe your whole life? That's, that's the step one question. Or are you just like, oh, if this works great, if not, I'm back to nine to five. I like, I already have my nine to five, so it doesn't really matter. I'm trying this part time because the investment in yourself has to be real. Right? Like you cannot lie to yourself. You cannot lie to yourself and be able to do this. Do you actually believe this or you're here for other reasons? 
just trying it out, meeting new people, being part of a community. You need to believe you can. And you need to believe you can to the level of more than what you've proven yourself that you can do already, right? So if you've manifested the horse and the green stone and the $500, you can't all of a sudden believe that's the extent of my powers. You have to believe that right now you're just lifting yourself up slowly from the wheelchair, okay? You have a long way between that and walking. And from walking, you have a long way to running, right? Like you always have to leave room for more because there's more coming. More is always coming. Your manifestation is always coming. The group always gets the weekly manifestation, but the timing will tell you sort of where you're at in alignment. I know I can because I can control fire. Fire is easy to control. All the natural elements are pretty easy to control, especially if you're able to do it as a child. Um, we have dominion over the elements of nature. And with enough focus, you know, like I can, <laughs> so I don't know if I should make a video on this because the one I did about rain, you know, I got so many people saying, oh, it's fake. It's like, guys, I would never embarrass myself with a fake video. Like, you know, but I can, I can tell my cat the other day I was, my cat was sleeping at my feet and I'm like, I'm command, like I'm exercising my mind, right? I'm like, I, get up. My consciousness can command your consciousness. Get up and come sit on me. And within six minutes, he did like out of the, because I was counting, right? I'm like, let's see. And I'm not going to call his name. And he was sound asleep. All of a sudden he perked up. He's like, <laughs> he came and he sat on me and I'm like, yeah, normalize it. Normalize it. I don't know if I can catch that on the video. Yeah, I'm the one with the weather video. Yeah, try to control it. If you have a pet, try to control their consciousness with your consciousness. Don't don't do this with another person, please. Do it, do it with an animal. Do it with other consciousness that's lower than you. Do do something small, like you know, just tell them to come with your mind, or tell them if you're they're lying down, you know, scratch scratch your head with your paw or something like this. How do you get close to the creator? Purity of heart. Purity of intention. Giving to all more than what you take from them. Everything that's already outlined in every religion. Turning the other cheek. Living the truth day to day. While believing that this is that that you have the right to aim high, releasing your guilt and shame. Uh, I could make like 10 videos on this topic. You cannot get close to the creator with guilt and shame, forgiving everybody who's done you wrong. You know how we have the saying, oh, I'll forgive, but I won't forget. Well, then you haven't forgiven. You haven't forgiven if you haven't forgotten. It's, it, guys, this isn't easy. Like it's, uh, you know, how do you, how do you think all those saints and, you know, Jesus, how do you think they performed those miracles? What kind of people were they inside? Right? So the closer you are internally to the qualities that we all know are outlined for us as model of behavior, the more you can manifest. Here we manifest to the highest benefit of all, right? We get what we want or better because that is our right to imprint the formless substance. We are creators. God has made us in his image, but never with any ill intent. Never. To the highest benefit of all, I get this or better. I get this man or better. I get this job or better. See what I mean? So you allow room when the universe shuffles. The moment you give instruction, the universe shuffles. But you have to stay in that vibration and in that command. You can't doubt it. When you doubt it, it shuffles again. When you have a strong feeling of love and hate, it shuffles again. So the timing, the time delay, some of your manifestations are delayed beyond the lifespan of your life. That's why you never see them come to pass. They all come to pass, by the way. Somebody else asked me, and I just did a video maybe like an hour or two before the live. 
Somebody asked me, how can I cancel all the negative thoughts? I used to have such negative behavior, negative fantasies, negative scenarios, really awful, horrible thoughts. How can I cancel it? So I did a video on it because I thought the question was interesting. Guys, we can um, control anything that happens to us sort of creatively in the 3D. But once we release a thought form out there into the form of substance, you can never take it back. The only thing you can do is delay its manifestation. All our thought forms are queued up. All of them. This is, people don't like to hear this. This is what karma is, right? When you come into the world with karma, where do you think it comes from? But anyways, I'm not sure if people want to talk about this kind of stuff on my lives because we're focusing on manifesting <sighs> practical things. Somebody left a message on one of my YouTube videos. It says, I manifested my SP um, to come back and say he wants to marry me. He had dumped her and she manifested him back. He came back to ask her to marry her. And then he ghosted her all of a sudden. So I want to tell you guys that if you do this work to manifest a certain behavior out of someone, this is almost always going to happen. Why? Because you will not be able to sustain this imprint into the formless substance about controlling someone else. Controlling someone else, not that you can't do it. Okay, It's like a curse or a blessing you put on someone, but it's like a curse. You can make people do things, but it's not going to be sustainable in your life. It's not, you're not going to be able to focus your energy to keep this imprint, right? To keep this laser focus instruction into the universe. So if you want to be married, okay? First of all, what I tell you guys about is bees. You got to let them go. You only work on raising your value, your vibration, your, it's about you. I'm happily married. I'm happily married because obviously I would only marry someone that I really love. So how can I be happily married if I didn't marry my SP, if I didn't marry, you know, the guy I want to marry, then I wouldn't be happily married. So me just giving the instruction that I'm happily married. That's enough of an instruction. That's not me trying to make anyone do anything. I'm not manifesting anyone proposing. I'm not manifesting anyone coming back. I'm not, I'm not doing any of that stuff. I'm manifesting myself into the future I want to have, right? This is where we have to stay. It's the only place where you have to stay. Why did I tell you? Some of you, I said, make physical space in your life for the fact that you are married. Sign, Mrs. Make room in your closet for your husband, your wife. I've got wedding planning YouTube on silent in the background. All of these are physical expressions of you telling the universe, sorry, taking actions in 3D to tell the universe I'm married, right? Like I'm obviously you have wedding, wedding planning in the background, because you're about to get married. We said next summer, right? Or September, September of next year. So you got to get ready. You got to pick your dress. You got to. So this is very different than you making your SP ring. Call me, call me. Right? Very different. Very, very different. We don't, we don't do that second part here, because I promise you, if you do it my way, the results will be amazing. And you won't bend anyone's will. You won't worry with your worry and doubt and fear that maybe your spell won't hold. Maybe it will hold three months. He's going to think you're a goddess and then ghost you. Disappear like that, like it happened to this queen because she didn't make the work about herself. She had made it about him. Do you see what I mean? It's the same thing that happens with people that uh, win the lottery. It's the poverty mindset that takes over and they lose it all because they can't sustain the ones who win randomly, right? Mostly 
that's why it, it's a ridiculous proportion of lottery winners who, who lose all their money and become worse. So I think it's like 87% or something statistically. This is why. My way is respectful to their free will. Yeah. But their will is probably to be with a woman like the woman you're becoming. Get it? So when your SP comes back to check in on you, hey, how are you doing? Like I talked about in my previous live. It's his consciousness checking in. Like he wants you, right? But it's his consciousness checking in. Is she still that girl that wasn't good enough? I'm sorry to say this to you guys, but that's exactly what's happening. He's still drawn to you, but he's like, let me check if I can still get her with, hey, how are you doing? Or has her value increased? Because I saw something in her. Or is she still the girl who would like be at my feet when I say, how are you doing? Be like, come on over. I'm doing great. I miss you. How are you? How have you been? My love. I've been good. I've been seeing my mom. I've been like, you know. He sends you one liner, you send him a paragraph. You gotta delete, hey, how you doing? You understand? Just just you're not responding to that. I have done the weather with tremendous success and now I love to control my surroundings. Yeah. This is like I said, for some people, like the control of the elements is not even a big deal. If you check my video on the weather, there's at least a thousand comments from people who say, like, what's the big deal? I've been doing this since I was a child. I think of you every day in the context of the work. I hope, David, I like that. Think, think of the group every day, guys. Mona, you have me thinking about the number on my green stone. What could it be? It will come to you. It will come to you. 1299. It's, is there's always a meaning. Otherwise it wouldn't have been in the photo. You see, cause I noticed it. I noticed it. You guys want to talk a little bit about money and money consciousness? That the owl is like it's a topic, right? So a lot of people say, um, I want to manifest money to pay off my debt. Right? Like how many people want to manifest money? Like the first thing they would do when they manifest money is pay off their debt. I pay that that is massive, massive poverty consciousness. I want you to completely forget about your debts. And I'm going to explain why. Rich people are full of debt. They live from the debt. This is how it works. Let's say they own real estate or stocks or something. They didn't, they didn't let's just say they have this assets, right? Let's just say if I own, I don't know, 10,000. Amazon stock at $400, whatever it's at. It's like four, four million dollars, right? So now I need a million to invest in my business, let's say. What people would think, how can I get the million? Well, sell 25% of your stock that's so worth four million and you'll have one million, right? In fact, if I did that, I would have to sell a lot more than 25% because there's capital gain tax on that of 25%. So I would need to sell about 30% of my stock to do this. But that depreciates my net worth. So instead, I'm going to go to the bank and I'm going to tell them I have 10,000 Amazon shares. I want you to give me a million dollars. The bank will give me a million dollars because I'm collateraling my shares against it. So now I still have my $4 million in shares and I have $1 million in debt. I take the million dollars in debt and I put it in my business. So the million is going to increase. But in addition to that, the interest that I pay on the million, the 5% will be much less than the value that my shares appreciate in. They continue. I still have $4 million in shares. I just create an extra million to work with. That is wealth consciousness. This is how wealthy people think and function. They're full of debt. 
The banks just give them more money. There's no tax on the million dollars I just got from the bank now, right? So there's no tax on that. As if, like, if I had to sell my shares, I would need to pay 25% in capital gain taxes. So I want you guys to think, if anybody thought, I'm going to win the lottery and I'm going to pay this off and I'm going to pay this off and I'm going to pay this off, that's poverty consciousness. Okay? From poverty consciousness, you cannot manifest wealth. Wealth is, what am I going to do when I win my whatever you want to win, $10 million? What am, how am I going to structure my money? Have you looked up financial planners? Have you looked, how are you going to structure? Oh, first I'm going to pay off my house, then I'm going to pay off my mom's house, then I'm going to pay off my... That's not what people do with $10 million. People who keep their money. What if I think I want to win the lottery and help everyone? You never really help people with money, right? This is what that saying is. If you want to help a man, don't give him a fish. Teach him how to fish. Even if you give everybody, you know, $10,000 or $100,000, that money will be gone in a few months. They'll be back to you like this. You still have a lot of money. Give me more. So the way you help people is you raise them up from poverty consciousness. I want you guys to be clear on this. You cannot give them $10,000 and say, I've helped. That money will be gone. When it will be gone, they will resent you for not giving them more. What is your personal experience of revision? I have many. I have many, but um, one of them is I have, I remember something very bad happening, like a very bad, bad medical thing that nobody else in the family remembers. And when it happened, I kind of just sort of put it, I'm like, no, this isn't, this isn't the case. This isn't the case. And nobody ever remembers this diagnosis in my family. I, I can't give more detail than that. But in that second, like without consciously being, let me manifest this away. Like I, I completely switched that and nobody else remembers that we even talked about it or anything like that. It wasn't about my body. It was about somebody else's body. Best to say, if I win the lottery, I'll put up a business and give them jobs. Yeah. Yeah, but even that needs to be done correctly, right? Even putting some money in a trust that invests in real estate or invests in something and they get dividends out of it. See what I mean? Like you really have to, to plan, talk to a financial planner, like have... Who are you going to call? Like, who's, do you know what I mean? Like, you're going to need to call a lawyer of even Google. What do smart lottery winners do? Right? Like, what are the first few steps to do when you win the lottery? I'll be like, now we're rich. Everyone in the family gets a million dollars. So then when my cousin does better with his million that I gave him, because he's smart and he's investing it and, you know, his sister is blowing it then guess what? His sister is going to hate both him and me in the end. She's going to need another million. I want you guys to think about that, right? Because you want to win the lottery. So winning the lottery is a manifestation that comes with many other manifestations. Just like when you manifest a house, it comes with many other manifestations like new builds, right? Property taxes. I have revised things um, and had photos and videos disappear after revising it. I had that as well. I had some photos completely disappear. I had that. So I, I didn't have a video, but I know exactly what you're saying. I'm looking for a photo. I know I took it in the last six months. It's completely not there. This, this thing didn't happen. It, it's real. Anybody else on revision? This is a fun topic. But your feelings towards it have to be like very strong for a moment, like the way mine was with the diagnosis, like very, very strong for a moment and then go away, like very strong, revise and go away. Like you can't be in this doubt and fear kind of when you're revising, right? So if you tune in the right way and you're able to do that, my God, you can just, there's videos on the internet, people manifest it, other people 
like there was this woman who said she manifested like she wanted to be with this man and he was with somebody else and he ended up being with her after a couple of years but he had no memory of being with this other relationship that she knows he had to break up to be with her and his family didn't remember that either it's kind of crazy Winning is like, be ready for hate, make yourself strong. Yeah, you got to have a plan and you got to be mentally prepared to win, guys. It can't take you by surprise. Okay, you already know who you're going to tell the first person, the second person. You already know sort of loosely how how much money, let's say you can give somebody like as a present, uh, each of my family members get $10,000 to blow on whatever they want. And after they've blown that, everything is structured. Right. Because you got to give them something to celebrate with you. But other than that, everything has to have a structure if you want to still have money and not become bankrupt. Neville Goddard used the term revision. Yeah, Neville Goddard revised a lot of stuff. Like we talk about Neville a lot, right? Um, I like Neville. Most people find him either too simple or too religious. But you said as soon as the thought form exists, it will manifest. So the thought forms that we release out there, the ones that are imbued with emotional energy manifest. Okay. So I, I want you to clarify your question. So it's not like every thought form, like I'm thinking of crossing the road right now and that will manifest. Like I might change my mind about that. Do you see what I mean? The, the thoughts that are imbued with love or hate, dislike, um, real pain, real, like all our emotional ties. When you put a thought against somebody, somebody really rubbed you the wrong way. A family member, you wish them, you know, that thought form, and it might not manifest literally, like they might not necessarily pass because you wish them away. Right. But something in that form will come back to you a hundred percent. Now, again, if you change your course, because we're always able with free will, but that thing is there, it's queued up and burning that karma, it's not going to be easy. Like we don't even know what karma we're burning from before right now, right? Every time I manifest as MP, they do come, as SP, they do come back, but leave again. So it's pointless to manifest for me. Yeah, because you're manifesting them. We just talked about this. I'm going to post, post this live. Um, sorry, what's your name? Nina, I'm going to post this live on my YouTube channel. Go back to the beginning. I talked about the specific question that somebody, somebody put. So I'm not going to have the conversation again. But the reason they're all leaving is because you can't sustain this form of spell or curse or whatever you want to call it by which you're calling them back. You got to make the work about you. Yes, but you said you had a strong emotion about that diagnosis. Yeah, no, I had a strong emotion about not, not fear about diagnosis. I, I just had a strong rejection. I was like, no, that's, that's not my reality. That's not it. It's, it's not true. And the person went to the scan again and it was like completely something else, like a week later. Completely something else that wasn't a big deal. So, and then, you know, when we asked for, like, can we see the previous results? They weren't, they weren't available. Thoughts on manifesting fame. That's too loose. How can we revise? Okay, I'm, I'm going to take it though. I'm, I'm assuming you want to manifest fame. Manifest fame, if you're not able to do it or easily do it, it's, it's really relatively easy to become famous in this world nowadays. You can do something really stupid and put it on the internet and become famous. If you're not becoming famous, you may have a sponsoring fear of being seen, or you may have a sponsoring thought of not being good enough. Those are the two strong roadblocks that will prevent you from fame okay it's either a fear of being seen maybe of your safety or not really good enough to be famous so i want to go back to the story sometimes we talk about during my life when jim carrey wrote himself a check 
for $10 million and wrote for services, for acting services rendered, right? So he didn't want to win $10 million in the lottery. In that state, when he wrote that check, he believed, he believed he's good enough of an actor to get paid $10 million on an acting gig, right? He appropriated his right to be famous. He didn't say $10 million from the bank of the universe, from anywhere, please. And anyhow, it can come to me anyhow. No, it was for acting services rendered because he thought himself, all I need is a chance to prove that I'm that good to be paid $10 million. Those are sort of my thoughts around manifesting fame. How can you revise without affecting my kids in a possible negative way, not remembering something? This is too specific to the situation. Um, stop, stop consulting astrologers. What are you guys doing? What are you talking about? I know if other people have revised diagnosis. Yeah, that's relatively easy to do because our body immediately is able to, um, shape shift for a better word. What do you base on not canceling negative thoughts? Many things. Many years and years of study and looking into this. And also the fact that some people are clearly born with karma. There's no other energetic explanation for kids that come into this world. More and more so with more and more problems they it can't be their thoughts it can't be so if you're into this work again if you don't believe any of this then you can just say it's random and it's materialistic but karma is is um is a clear indicator that certain things will catch up with you no matter what no matter if you've changed into a much better person. Um, my in-laws have told me a story, okay, from, from sort of the culture. And the story is that one of their relatives has gone to a fortune teller and the fortune teller said, your son is born with this um, karma and he's going to off a man, okay? I can't say the K word on TikTok. And so they've done serious rituals and things to prevent their son from offing a man from becoming a criminal. And believe it or not believe it, this man became a sportsman. They kind of forgot about it. He would, they were really proud of him. And in a sports accident, he threw something that hit somebody in the head and off that man. So what they believe, what they told me culturally is that they were able, their rituals and prayers to minimize the impact of that karma. Like they couldn't really cancel the fact that he was going to offer men, but the way in which this happened can be much diminished, delayed or diminished through the effects of, of this work of goodness, of prayer, of, do, do you see what I mean? So that's, again, like, I'm not sure how this live became so metaphysical, okay? <laughs> but um, those are, like, kind of stories you don't, you don't really need to worry about in this lifetime. Just focus on what you can change today. New here, let's see. Um, the astrology thing or any readings have to do, if they're accurate, if they're by somebody reputable, have to do with reading your energy levels of today. You can choose different energy levels tomorrow. It's a choice. It's a choice and the work you do, it's a choice. If you do this work, you go back to the same astrologer, they will have a different interpretation tomorrow because they're reading a different energetic signature out of you. What are your thoughts on tarot? I think I just answered that. 
a good tarot reader will tell you where you're at today. You can choose not to accept it and to create a different version of yourself. Go back in a week, you'll get a different reading. Okay. Lives are posted on YouTube. Yes, they are. The I'm under the same handle at finer manifestation. Tarot reading are based on present energy. Yeah, it's your present energy into the predictable future based on your energetic vibration, right? If you're vibrating like this, this has a certain future prediction of where you can go in your vibration. If you're vibrating like this, that has a different prediction of where you could go in the future. It's like reading, it's like if you see a car going a certain way, right? You can kind of estimate where it's going to end up in 20 minutes or in 10 minutes or in five seconds. But the driver of that car can, in a split second, change direction. I can only read where that car is going to go if I'm assuming it will move in the same direction. Get it? Same thing with numerology. Same thing with all of these things. By the way, we're kind of born with a number that we know resonates with us. Like I've always known my number as a child. And I'm talking about the number between one and 10. You kind of know it's, it's not based on adding up your birthday or what have you. Um, I want you guys in the process of this work to sort of drop all this auxiliary forms of whatever this is that astrology and tarot and they fall into. Okay. Because you cannot assume you're creating your future if you're having other people read your future. I love that analogy because I always do that when I'm driving. Yeah, surprise the guy behind you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a distraction. It's a distraction, exactly. It's a distraction, major, major. Major distraction. Can't remember my dream when I wake up in the morning. Okay, so Queen, if you guys can't remember your dreams, because I told you it's important we make the association in our waking life. And actually we did that with somebody today and it was good. I think I, for me, it was clear. And then she realized it as well. Um, when you go to sleep at night, okay, make sure you have a practice by which you collect your power from wherever you leave it throughout the day. Usually people who can't remember their dreams, they're very scattered in their energy. Maybe they're communicating with a lot of people during the day. They don't, they're not able to have their own consciousness return back to them during the sleeping hour, right? Enough to remember and record. So I want you to purposely have this meditation with maybe binaural beats, and then inside of your solar plexus, see this shining sun. And in that shining sun, you, sh you can see it projecting out rays. But also, you know, as you projected all those rays throughout the day, now you're collecting back all the rays and you're putting it back into your solar plexus. OK, and you're saying out loud, I'm collecting my energy. I want to be in my inner self. I want to connect I am aware of the form of substance. I want my soul to go back into it and collect the information that I need for my life, for my manifestation. I want to remember. I want to stay connected. You have to say this is a clear instruction and don't do it for two nights and then forget about it, right? Like, like I said, with a guy in a wheelchair, you got to train this muscle and do it. But there's people who are able to collect back enough of their consciousness to be able to even go from never dreaming to lucid dreaming almost on demand. I also seem to remember more when I wake up early and go back to sleep for a bit. Yeah. When I wake up, I always make sure that I stay with my eyes closed and I review my dreams. Like that's the first thing I do. So I'm becoming conscious, but I'm not opening my eyes. I'm like, okay, what A, B, C, and then what happened? And then I'm talking about in the dream. Right. Because I want to remember these things if I say them to myself in my conscious mind, as opposed to if I open my eyes and I'm like, oh, it's a sunny day. What time is it? I look at my phone, you know, by this time I forgot half the dream. But I remember my dreams every night and I dream every night. I'm afraid to go deeper because I don't want to go mental. 
very, very clear fear. A lot of people have the fear of disconnecting from the collective consciousness because we all innately know the way the world is now is not who we are, right? So if we go deeper, we know we're not going to be able to see the world the same and function the same. Like you can't do this work and then be ready for clubbing on Saturday night. That doesn't happen. This is why people who go deeper, they kind of disconnect from society and from, it, it's just innate, right? Like you can't, and we all know that. We all know that, right? Like we know that if we're going to do this work, none of this is going to resonate anymore. None of it. None of what's going on, like not the economic collapse, not the viruses, none of it is going to matter that much anymore. See what I mean? You have nothing to talk about with your spouse, you, etc. So don't go deeper until you're ready, but that's a valid fear. You remember, you choose the way you live. You can actually only live in 3D. It's not a problem if that's your life experience, right? Because most people don't like random results anymore. They want results that they want. Well, in order to have non-random results, you have to have a focused consciousness. And in order to have a focused consciousness, it's like the guy in a wheelchair, you got to train the muscles. In the process of doing this, you realize deeper truths. This is why a lot of people break up friendships and relationships as they're going about their day doing this. They no longer, they, they're intolerable. The people around them, that they've been around them for 10, 20 years, are intolerable. So I don't understand. Is it okay? I'm, I'm just going a couple of minutes over just because I'm not going to be here next week. And I just want to make sure I'm catching like questions that are pertinent to the group. Is it okay or not to manifest an SP? Like I know what I want, but how I let him go. There's two steps to this, right? Please watch my videos. So your number one work should be around yourself. I'm wanted, I'm loved. Everything we talked about, right? It's you every day on repeat because I guarantee you that you or 99% of the women do not think that they're loved, wanted, adored, desired, worth protecting, worth providing for, that men would go crazy for them, that they're the only ones on the man's mind. Like if I tell you that's who you are, you probably have a little difficult, at least a little difficulty believing. So you want to have less and less difficulty believing that. That's the number one work as it comes to the SP. Now, if you have a specific SP in mind, you got to realize it's not him that you want. It's the version of him that vibrates with this new woman. So it's not the same guy who left you and cheated on you, who has low character, who ghosts you. You don't want a guy like that. No normal woman wants a guy like that, right? You want the version of him that is in alignment with this high vibration version of you. So for that, you got to change the whole story because I'm wanted and loved and I'm so worth my God. I'm, I'm just the only option. You know, he is so romantic towards me. He is so, do, do you see the point from where I'm doing this work? Okay. It's not like, John, I command you to text me. I command you to text me. This is not from, from that point. I'm starting watching my fear, whatever emotion moves as it comes up. It's not easy. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's not easy watching your fears because we have so many. It, it, like, it's not easy not only watching it, but taking action that are the opposite of your fear. This is the most important thing. Whatever fear you have is to take the, the, when it comes to you and you're like, this is a fear is to choose courage instead. So if you've been meaning to text that person, to text a friend or, or what have, not your SP, okay? But you're like, but I wonder what they think about me because we haven't been talking. Choose courage instead. I, I now believe more of self-concept that it takes you away from even wanting an SP. Bingo. Bingo. If you're doing this work correctly, it's not that you're not, yeah, you're not going to want a specific person. You're going to realize that you won't be able to help attracting what 
the vibrational match to you, what you want. It's, it's almost comical. It's almost like looking at that SP and being like, what? <laughs> but you need to get there on your own. This work is only experiential. You cannot, you need to experience. This is why we're doing the work in my group. You need to experience slow and small wins, like slowly over a period of time. So your brain can make this connection. Actually, guys from the past are contacting me now constantly and finding some commonality. Yeah. You won't find people on this journey looking for a relationship or you'll find them in a perfect relationship already, right? Like they've already aligned. They already know. They've changed. The person changed. They attracted who they want. I tell you, people who are doing this work are probably not having conflict in their relationship. They're not having conflict. I'm telling you. I think ones who vibe with me are contacting me. Yeah. And it, it has to do with your vibration now, right? Your vibration now doesn't mean that two weeks from now won't be even better. So, so don't worry about it. You know, like don't like if something vibrates with you now, you can connect. If not, you can, you, you just can never fear that. Oh my God, this is my chance. Cause if I'm not going to go for him, I don't think I can find better. Then you drop back down in your self concept. So yeah. Okay, guys, I gotta, um, I gotta go. Remember I'm away next week. Remember there are scammer accounts. I never contact anybody ever. If you need something from me, you're the one who has to contact me. So if somebody contacts you and says it's me or offers you programs or what have you, it's not me. Um, we talked about this. Keep doing the 60 day challenge in my bio. I will be present every day on my Facebook group. Of course, I just won't be doing the lives. I'll, I'll still record some videos, but I won't be doing the lives. And then when I come back, we'll talk about why the universe sometimes um, shows us the opposite because I didn't get to this topic today. I'll save it for the next live, which will be Monday, not this Monday, but the following Monday. Enjoy your leave. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Let's put our hands together. We do the 369 tapping. I tap, I count. You just have to repeat after me and tap. If you don't want to do the exercise, it will take about 15 seconds. Then please drop the live. This is the end of the live. I am a winner. 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 I am a winner.